almost 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 major 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 holy fucking shit this is major Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Almost Major, where we talk about the many major studios and the films they released. Today we are on our third episode of our new 80s New Line Cinema miniseries. My name is Kevin Tudor. I'm here with Bryden Doyle. Hello. And Charlie Nash. Hello. And we have a super special guest today. Returning guest, it is Mary Beth McAndrews, as I like to dub her the queen of found footage. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me back for this incredible episode. I'm very ready. You're very ready. We all are. Uh, We are talking about today, The Evil Dead from 1981. Folks, this is our first NC-17 movie we're covering. Wait, really? No, wait. Isn't Center of the World NC-17? That's unrated. Ah. Oh, very different. Very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is... I'll get into it with the trivia, but yes, our first NC-17. Um, it is kind of crazy. I, I mean, I knew going in, because I've seen this movie a ton of times before, but just reminding myself that this is NC-17 is a little... Like, it's not, not extreme, but it's also a little ridiculous to be like, keep the kids away from this one, considering how the wonderfully goopy and cheesy it is at times. Yeah. Yeah. The remake of Evil Dead is more extreme in its rated R. Exactly. Like, I, it's, it's that very, is one movie where 19, I'm like, I, I think it's understand. 1980s like nc-17 you know what i yes. mean it's so funny to lump it in with films like i spit on your grave i'm like these films yeah. are not like no henry portrait of a serial killer <laughs> I yeah just like i feel like they're not the same but hey <laughs> what do i know yeah. <laughs> uh the budget for this was three hundred fifty thousand dollars opening weekend i have no idea folks uh domestic gross of 2.4 million and overall gross of 29.4 million and those grosses, I'm going to assume, are from, like, years and years and years of screening, so who knows. Um, was, this was screening in the middle to late 1981 in Michigan, but not officially released by New Line until 1983. This was, and it was released April 15th, 1983. And top five films that weekend was uh, Lone Wolf McQuaid, Flash Dance, Tootsie, Gandhi, and The Outsiders. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, one ticket for The Evil Dead, please. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I have only seen Tootsie out of that lineup. <laughs> you haven't seen Flashdance? It sucks, but you I haven't have seen not it? seen Flashdance. I've seen it on uh, 4K as a steelbook at Best Buy, which will probably not be there for much longer R. after R. last week's wow. news. Yeah. Can't wait for the last the next couple of years, and that's like a story. Like, Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Best Buy and get a washer and dryer. They used to sell movies here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Show I, grandpa. I don't. <laughs> Lone Wolf McQuaid. I do not even know what that is, and that was number one. I Brian, don't either. Anything? No, I don't. I the only ones I've wow. seen. Uh, well, the only ones I've seen the Tootsie and uh, Flashdance and the Outsiders. I think was like the first Coppola I ever saw because I read that book when I was a, a teenager. Yeah, yeah. The Outsiders, the Outsiders is a. As a young girl, I was I was required to like the Outsiders. <laughs> I the I should have seen the Outsiders. I have no excuse. The one time that it was like on when I was over at a friend's house, we just started talking. So like I I really don't have an excuse, especially considering that cast. I mean, Jesus Christ! I remember <laughs> it's required. It's required watching in Oklahoma, actually. So I I, 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 I have to watch it every year. Oh yeah, yeah I forgot that one of the tracks on um the it's Rumble like soundtrack. Harvest is- uh, sorry, go ahead, please. Instead of hunting October Boy, you have to watch The Outsiders. Have you guys seen Dark yeah. Harvest yet? The new David Slade movie. No, is no. it good? No. Oh, okay. Real quick, and then we'll get back yes, to it. Yes, please. They yeah, buried yeah. that movie, and it was not fair. That movie is actually really fucking good. It was dumped on. It was dumped on VOD. It's very good. It's silly, but also really gross, and some of the best creature effects of the year. Go watch Damn. it. Nice. He okay. did. He did hard candy in Thirty Days of Night, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yeah. did. So it like looks like that. It's very bloody. It's like him st- as stylish, but also a very interesting look at toxic masculinity. Oh, Ooh. It's oh yeah. It's very shockingly great, and it's perfect Halloween movie. So anyway, awesome. Oh yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Somebody says it's like the Purge meets Pumpkinhead. I, I, oh, yeah, with like a where, little bit of sprinkling of the great pumpkin Charlie Brown, and I'm not joking. Wow. <laughs> Motherfucker. I, yeah, I want to see it. Shut up. <laughs> Let me find it. <laughs> I want to see it right song? now. Oh. Yeah, anyway. Number one song in the U.S. this week is Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. Y'all ever heard that? Uh, the next week, uh, number nope. one song was... Yeah. yeah. The, next, the next week, number one, though, is Come On Eileen 
which is a true 10 out of 10 track for only one week. Number one song in Canada this week is Mitch Roboto by Styx. Well, 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 Canada. Um, the story behind the song that I've always known is like the lead singer versus like came in. He was like, I got the song about a robot, guys, and the whole album's going to be about it. And they were just like, we're leaving this fucking band. <laughs> <laughs> um, plot description from Google. Ashley, quote, Ash Williams, Bruce Will- Bruce Campbell. This is girlfriend Bruce and Willis. three pals. <laughs> Willis. Bruce Willis. I'll, I'll, I'll deep fake that. Yeah. Um, his girlfriend and three pals hike up into the woods to a cabin for a fun night away. There they find an old book, the Necronomicon, whose text reawakes the dead when it's read aloud. The friends inadvertently release a flood of evil and must fight for their lives or become one of the evil dead. Ash watches his friends become possessed and must make a difficult decision before daybreak to save his own life in this, the first of Sam Raimi's trilogy. Uh, don't think it's that difficult. He gives it like five seconds and then just starts chainsawing people. But uh, written and directed by Sam Raimi. Uh, uh, prior to this, a bunch of shorts, including Within the Woods in 1987 or 1980, 1978, my bad, which is the basis and kind of test footage for this film. After this, Crime Wave 1985, Evil Dead 2 in 1987, Dark Man in 1990, Army of Darkness in 1992, and A Simple Plan in 1998. Check that shit out. Billy Billy Bob Thornton is fantastic in that. Uh, the Spider-Man trilogy and Drag Me to Hell in 2009. Uh, where are we at on Sam Raimi? Who's your faves, least faves, everybody? Yeah. Really good. I still need to see for Love of the Game, though. That's where, like, you know, I'm really, I'm really <laughs> on the <laughs> fence <laughs> until I see that one. Starring Bruce Campbell as Ash Williams prior to this. Basically, every Sam Raimi movie, so let's just knock that out of the way. Uh, after this was the lead in Maniac Cop in 1988 and is in Maniac Cop 2 in 1990, to go back to our Bill Lustig tip. Um, Intruder in 1989, I need to rewatch this. I saw it in, like, seventh grade and really dug it. Uh, he's apparently in the shot on video movie The Dead Next Door from 1989, which I have, and I need to watch that. The Hudsucker Proxy in 1994, the lead on Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. In 19- from 19... 19- 1993 to 1994 and Bubba Hotep in 2002 and of course reprised his roles for both Evil Dead games Evil Dead Fist, Fistful of Boomstick and Hell to the King I've played both of them for a few minutes and they're basically impossible to play but um whoa what I, I was curious about them they're impossible <laughs> it's just the type of controls they just you uh, try to play them on modern shit and it's just like why what it, what, it, it plays like playing the original tomb raider where you're just like why do you walk like this this is impossible um, <laughs> um oh and of course uh, uh 111 episodes of burn notice from 2007 to 2013 and for those of you who don't him. remember burn burn notice is a highly rated show that new york post calls a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah wow that snl clip is so good Okay, Kevin, cool. I, me- <laughs> I mentioned that we watched the SNL sketch the other uh, last week, and he forgot that he had watched a ton of it. He was like, which one is Burn Notice again? And then he was like, oh, oh no, yeah, wait, I, I have watched, watched five that seasons show. of that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay, so almost everybody else in this movie really hasn't done much, but I'll point it out if I come across it. Uh, Ellen Sandwise as Cheryl. She even reprised her role in the Evil Dead asymmetrical online game that came out last year. So hell yeah. Uh, Hal Delrich as Scott. Betty Betsy Baker as Linda. Now she didn't do so much afterwards and stopped acting for over a decade into the late 2000s and has been working ever since on a ton of television shows. Even showed up in the Oz and Great and Powerful and four episodes of Sharp Objects. Oh. And Teresa Tilly as Shelley. Yeah, really weird. Like from Evil Dead to like 2005 just no acting and then if you go she has like a hundred credits in the past decade who is she on sharp objects i do Could, not know also did anyone else watch uh, that show yeah really oh, yeah. Like oh, oh i yeah. did yeah. oh yeah. fuck yeah i watched yeah. it yeah. 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 yeah kicked ass yeah <laughs> we're gr- we're girls in the south rollerblading around killing people that's not actually what the yeah. show's about but like you know no, <laughs> that, <laughs> it's that's just what like, i remember it as yeah yes. <laughs> no spoilers but spoilers like hell yeah <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, trivia: The cabin used at. There's a lot of trivia, and I did not even come close to scratching the surface, but I just found the cool stuff. Um, the cabin used as the film set was also lodging for the 13 crew members, with several people sleeping in the same room. Living conditions were terrible. I'm gonna put a question mark on that. And the crew frequently argued. They say it's terrible because it's cold. Grow up. Um, the cabin that didn't sounds, have plumbing. As someone who has made a film and lived in the set. I could buy that. Yeah. <laughs> I lived in the cabin that we filmed our movie wow. for three and a half weeks. Oh my God. With the other, with the writer and one of our producers. 
and also random people who didn't have places to stay. So I can understand that. <laughs> did you at least have like basic plumbing and it wasn't freezing cold we did. outside? We did. We okay. had, it was hot. We had basic plumbing, but it, it was a log cabin and like there was concrete and stuff, but there were still little gaps. Like it was actually like a cabin, like a man oh, built for awesome. his wife. It's cool. Yeah. Anyway, but. Yeah. What was it? So the actress went days without showering and felt ill frequently in the freezing weather. Grow up. By the end of the production, they were burning furniture to stay warm. The temperatures were so cold at times during shooting that the camera and other wiring froze. They then had to be thawed by the fireplace inside the cabin. Sound beautiful. I would love to live there. Um, the original script called for all the characters to be smoking weed when they were first listening to the tapes. The actors decided to try this for real, and the entire scene had to be later reshot due to the uncontrollable behavior. They got too high. <laughs> what do you want? I believe it's all it. smoke weed. This will be great. All right, take 28. God damn it. <laughs> what did you think? Like, I can only imagine what that looked like. I want it so bad. I want that, yeah. like, on a cut. <laughs> I'm sure they have blooper reels. I was watching the start of... Uh, some uh, making of documentary from like Anchor Bay DVD back in the day, and it had a bunch of setup shots and a bunch of stuff I'd never seen before. So I assume that's probably out there. I need mm. I need to see the gang getting high. I need to see that. Um, after completing principal photography in the winter of seventy nine through eighty, most of the actors left the production. However, there was still much of the film to be created. So most of the second half of the film features Bruce Campbell and various stand-ins to replace the actors who left. Um, at the end of a quote-unquote normal day of shooting, Bruce Campbell would return home in the back of a pickup truck because he was covered in fake blood from head to toe, just a king. Um, I'm surprised that there's not like a story on this movie like other ones where like cops pulled him over and he's like, wait, wait, I can explain. You know? <laughs> um, the film's first cut ran at around 117 minutes, which Bruce Campbell called an impressive achievement in light of a 65-minute length of the screenplay. <laughs> It was then edited down to a more remarkable 85 minutes. The original version was conceived as a horror drama with an occasional joke thrown in. After watching the first cut, uh, everybody agreed that it should just be a straight-up horror movie. At one point, Bruce Campbell's shirt that he wears in the film was so saturated with the fake blood that after drying it by the fire, the shirt became solidified and broke when he tried to put it on. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, another side note that almost happened to a pair of pants on set because there was so much dried blood in a pair of this boy's pants that we put Whoa. on him and they were solid. Wow. wow. That's great. so awesome. <laughs> I tried to wash them. No. <laughs> was, it like, God, no. Uh, w- no. was it like that SpongeBob episode where he keeps ripping his pants that just happened during a take? <laughs> 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 just breaks in half because they're solidified. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never in my life, and probably will never be in my life, say be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't go anywhere. My pants are solidified. I, I, I can't." Do it. Was it, he was like so <laughs> soaked in blood at one point because of what we had to do to him that, like, we have a picture of him just being like, "I have to take my pants off," and he just had his boxers on and like had his pants down. He's like, "I'm so damp from the amount uh, of blood on my body right now." <laughs> oh, that's. Oh. This is the gl- most glowing endorsement for your movie ever. I know. I was like, I'll um, just talk about the blood. I feel like that amount of blood that we had, like, that'll be enough to get people. These pants were solid. <laughs> so <laughs> what I'm so saying awesome. is I made the next Evil Dead. No, I'm just kidding. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I did not. I would never, ever claim that. I wish. But anyway. Sorry, um, keep interrupting. No, please. No, <laughs> it's it's incredible. I love yes. it. Uh, Sam Raimi originally wanted the title of the film to be Book of the Dead, but pro- the producer changed the title to The Evil Dead for fear that kids would be turned off seeing a movie with a literary <laughs> reference. <laughs> I'm not watching that shit. There's reading in it. Man, if only they'd learned that lesson with the Blair Witch Project sequel. And I'm like, Book of Shadows? Oh, <laughs> too much. <laughs> That's why that movie yeah. bombed, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 because I put a book in it. <laughs> yeah. There's not a book in it. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's just in the goddamn title. Um, the film was shown to Stephen King, and it was his glowing endorsement, which later reused on the film's ads and posters of the film, which really oh, sold it to the public. The film was bought by New Line Cinema soon afterwards. The film was initially released in the U.S. by New Line, with the X rating revised to an NC-17 in 1994. Home video copies produced by Anchor Bay are uncut and unrated because the licensing studio was not contractually obligated to provide an MPAA rating. 
this is one of the original video nasties. And uh, lastly, I thought this was this was cute. Uh, Lucy Lawless saw the film upon release. She was appalled, particularly by the infamous Vine rape sequence, and wondered what kind of horrible people would make such a film. Ironically, she would later marry the film's producer Rob Tappert in work in productions <laughs> directed by and produced by Sam Raimi. I just thought that was, was a cute say, little melting of words. They're homies. <laughs> 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 Her, um, Bruce Campbell there, and Ted Raimi are in a lot of Xena episodes together. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many, so much more trivia, and I cannot even begin to scratch the surface, so I would just leave it at that. But initial thoughts. Um, everybody had seen this prior besides Bryden, correct? Bryden, you gotta go you first. You've never seen it before? No. I guess it's because, like, wow. my gateway. Well, okay. I mean, this might be interesting because sometimes it's interesting when we talk about, like, a major director, like, what are gateways into a director was. I mean, I was the right age for, like, watching the Spider Man movies when they came out. I don't know if that was everyone else's gateway, like, because I feel like, well, I don't know. I'm curious to hear. My little brother um, loves it, loved the Spider Man movies because my brother is nine years younger than me. And so those movies came out, like, when he, I think the first one came out in 2002. Two? Two. Yeah. Two. I was and he 10. was born in 2002, yeah. which is... <gasps> wow. Um, yeah. My That's possible? <laughs> Apparently. Um, yeah. he, was born, he was born after 9-11, which is very weird. Um, That's <laughs> impossible. Okay, sure. <laughs> but it was his hyperfixation movie, and so we watched Spider-Man, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, like, every day for, like, a year. Wow. <laughs> You're just like coming home from school. You're just like, everything's going to be all good. And then you just hear Chad Kroger being like, I am so high. And you're like, God damn it. Yeah. I was like, Bonesaw is not ready for this. <laughs> Isn't Octavia Spencer the one who signs Peter up and she's like, may God be with you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For that yes, match. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. I noticed it you. because I, I rewatched it in lockdown. I was like, oh my God, that's Octavia Spencer. Never knew. Um, yeah, that was my first gateway too. I saw Spider Man the first one when I was in theater. When it was in theaters, I was no, I was eleven. I was eleven. Yeah, and then yeah, as soon as I got into horror movies, Evil Dead was my gateway too. So, yeah, yeah, Brian, continue. Yes, um, yeah, I, I I had never seen this, so yeah, I never seen this one before. The only other Evil Dead movie I had seen was weirdly the the new one uh, because. Uh, it, that one was directed by an Irish filmmaker, and I'm doing this resolution this year where I decided to watch movies by Irish filmmakers. So that was when I was like, well, going on the list. Uh, watched that one before the original. Um, but um, Kicks ass, doesn't it's it? It's fun. Um, I, I, yeah. I think this one I like more. I do like this one more, uh, the, the the Raimi one, because I think it's – I just sort of – I admire, I guess, it's uh, – it's a single mindedness in a way where it is just like a shock machine. I feel like Evil Dead Rise, that one kind of falters when it is trying to like get like the emotional core or try to be about something. Like I'm like thinking, what exactly is that movie saying about motherhood? And also like, what are these uh, performances? It's like, and then you look up like everyone, turn, everyone, no one is like playing like where they're originally from. Like they're all like doing American accents. I'm like, yeah, I can tell. Like uh, they're, they're, it's kind of like stilted, I would say. But, uh, but no, that movie's like very fun when it like settles into just like the unrelenting gore gags and stuff um this one is good i don't like the this is not anywhere close to my favorite sam raimi movie i think i i i warm, I warm a little bit more towards like his blend his later blends of sort of like the the over-the-top gruesome violence and the and like a sincere emotional core as well as like the wicked sort of humor like i think drag me to hell is like is probably like a a nastier mm. but like that's that's what I, I sort of gravitate towards uh because like i feel like that one it is I like have the you seen Evil Dead too? I haven't. That so you know what that is. That, okay, that's a so major you haven't caveat. seen Evil. You haven't seen any of the other Evil Dead. Okay, no, I was just curious. I was like, wait, hold. On. I just need to understand where you're at. Totally. with Sam Raimi. Mm-hmm. To under- okay. Oh, it's important I context. You. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I just there, there's always so much time. I I, I I didn't leave myself enough time to catch up with that, but I will. I, I'm gonna watch them. I liked this one. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. But um, yeah, no, it, this one's good. I I, I did. I'm, I'm gonna try to talk about this and like not sound like un- unenthusiastic because I did enjoy it, but like uh, it was. Um, I'm trying to think of what exactly was holding me back. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I mean, it's like it, I'll just start by uh, talking about what I liked. I, mean, I, I loved um, the camera movements and everything, where like you know you're sort of like uh, mm-hmm. it seems like it'll be like. I, I mean, I love how like in the, at the end of the movie when like it seems like it's just an ordinary shot of the leaf and everything, like looking down, and then the camera starts to move. You know whooshing towards the house and like you know tilting all over the place it's really tricking you about what perspective that you're taking on and um i do think the humor there is like 
slivers of humor, uh, which is like something that like, uh, like I, I think one of the jokes that I love in the movie is when like he's walking in the cellar when Bruce Campbell's walking in the cellar and he walks through like the big bloody puddle and you just see like a like a floating box of band aids. It's sort of like it's like just underlining the futility of band aids at that point in the situation. M- made me think of one of one of my favorite jokes in the movie I watched this year was um or I caught up with this year was uh, Starship Troopers where like every time someone gets injured or like killed like they yell medic and it'll be like someone's yeah. like laughing with the brains blown out. And it's like that's that's not gonna help anyone at this point. Um, Pass that point. Yeah, and um, uh, I, I I did uh, enjoy this. Uh, I, I, the 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 sort of like the sound design and the score were like the things that really like stuck with me and everything. Sort of like almost sounding like gastrointestinal almost like lots of like squel- squelching it sounds like it's coming from someone's innards or anything it's like really really like i mean it, it, i mean that's like almost like you know gross to listen to itself and like you can like almost hear like the life like draining out of like the the movie as like you know the situation just worsens or anything where it's sort of like like this droning music that like you know you can hear it like just sort of like getting more and more distorted um it and the makeup effects are pretty incredible just like the array of colors that like you know it's like the level of detail like you know where it's like not just like gray and red but also like a little bit of green a little bit of yellow at like the top of like someone's forehead and like you know it is like really there is like a real sense of like gooey texture that like i, I mean one of the things i was hearing about when the new one came out was like people saying like oh cgi blonde that's is it as effective as the original one well, I'm fine. I, I like that movie because it is just, just so unrelentingly gross where it is like, I mean, similar to this one where like people are just like getting are the, the, the growing frustration with being covered in so much blood and everything where like it's like drenching someone's face and like, you know, matting their hair down. Um, but like there is like something to be said about this movie where like, you know, I can like think like that person's like when like all the bodies are like just like decomposing. I'm like, oh, what's that like thing that looks like mashed potatoes that's coming out of that guy's neck hole and everything? It's just like it's mashed potatoes. It is mashed potatoes, <laughs> probably. <laughs> no, I'm just probably. it probably no, is. I, I love it. I mean, like it looks. I mean, it's not realistic, I guess, but like, yeah, but like, it is like <laughs> it's the grosser choice and everything because it looks like you know wet and real, like something that you could touch and everything. Real in the sense of like I could actually like. I could touch what that is and everything. Whereas like, you know, I guess the CGI is like, it doesn't always have that tactile, that sense of tactility. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed this. I think it, it's maybe like, maybe this was my fault. Like coming into this movie, like, you know, after seeing a lot of his later movies and everything, I just sort of like, I maybe am a little more of a fan with like his more of his more polished work. Polish isn't the problem because this movie's like really well cut together. You know, we'll talk about phenomena and everything, and I like that movie. You know, the, that movie we're talking next week and everything, but that movie's a little like um a little jagged, I would say, in its editing rhythms and ways that are a little disorienting. Um, whereas this one, I feel like you know, it's it's a lot slicker. Um, and sometimes that's just my speed. Um, but no, I I I, I this is like a gr- I can totally see why he became like a big filmmaker off of this one, and I I, I it's fun to see like you know his bag of like tricks and like his sort of mordant sense of humor uh uh developing uh early on um i think i just like him i, I feel like he he sort of wields it he melts his tones a little bit uh more to my liking uh uh in his later movies like dark man and drag me to hell but that's just me uh i i like this yeah. it's, it's obviously it, a very you see that you see that a lot well because again like it is one of his first movies so it's it is really interesting that you're seeing it after seeing so many more of his more polished things when he had way bigger budgets yeah. and it wasn't just like him and his friends fucking around in the woods of Michigan, I think is where yes. they made it. Yeah. Um, I, and like, it, like you were talking about the editing, it is real. It's like, you can totally see how this movie influenced so many other movies in terms of like cinematography and editing style. Like so many movies ape on that, especially Evil Dead, when you see Evil Dead 2, when like he really, they really did like the crazy editing with like the chainsaw arm and everything. Cause the chainsaw arms only in Evil Dead too, right? He doesn't get the, he doesn't get the yeah because yeah. yeah that's right. I always even though I've seen them both a million times, I get them mixed up a little bit in my head about like what happens in which one, but um because this one obviously is not funny as like the second one is obviously much more. That's legitimately but... scary, dude. Like people yeah, forget like no, the first this... one is legitimately scary. Yeah, like, it is scary. Yeah, it's not... And Evil Dead 2 is kind of talked about more because of how crazy and weird it is, but Evil Dead 1... The, the OG is scary. It's a scary movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a scary movie. Mary Beth, you were talking about a little bit, but what are your, what's your what been your history, your initial thoughts with uh, Evil Dead? So, I... 
actually, it's funny. It's funny because the Evil Dead um, trilogy is like, one of the first things that my husband showed me when we started dating in college. Um, we had like an Evil Dead movie marathon because he's a big evil. He was a big Evil Dead fan, and so we watched all three one weekend, and I was obsessed with them. So um, thank you to Steve for introducing me to the Evil Dead and getting me to watch it. And I've just always loved everything about it. I love Sam Raimi. The Quick and the Dead is very good. I've yeah. watched that recently. And it is such a good underrated Western from Sam Raimi. Uh, I highly recommend Sharon Stone, isn't it? <laughs> and she's really good. I have... It's interesting. I love The Evil Dead, but I obviously have, like, a complicated feelings about, like, the rape, the tree, the tree vine rape scene that I think is, like, so defining of it. Mm-hmm. And I always... I sometimes forget about it because it's so, like... I know that, like, Raimi has, I think, expressed regret for having that scene in the movie and has talked about how he kind of wishes they hadn't done it. And I can... See, it's, like, it's one of these things where it's, like, I understand why they did it. It's an incredibly shocking and memorable moment. But the problem then arises when people want to recreate it. And, like, I always feel, like, weird when people are like, mm, but well, like, he did it. I'm like, yeah, but... It wasn't great that he did it in the first place. Yeah. Um, Just this, like... You know, possession, raping, like literal rape as possession, like possession as rape and as the whole thing. Again, it's a, it's 1980. I know that it's a different time, but it's just, you know, it's a weird mark in this movie that is like, and, and again, I think it adds to the horror of it. And I also really like, and I, I bring it up because I think I also really like, like isn't the right word here, <laughs> how they handle it in Fetty Alvarez's uh, like remake, read. I love how they do it only because they have her have the agency and kind of t- w- winning have as I, have you all seen it the, the new oh one? i i love it it's, it's okay maybe Sorry, my favorite Ryan, and horror movie of 2010s that's okay. it's incredible yeah. i'm spoiling things um totally. but even though she goes through that she kind of has like the final girl revenge like i kind of can see i have a whole thing about how that movie could even be seen as like a rape revenge movie if you really want to take like her getting raped and being essentially murdered by the demon but she comes back mm. while it's her brother she comes back and fights whatever but i think that gives a little bit more agency to the character rather than just you know as we've seen in the 80s raping as like this kind of spectacle of the worst way possible something could happen to a woman and putting it on screen and i also think they did an interesting thing in evil dead rise they like pay homage to it but they don't go full yeah and I was actually really into that because I was like, I love how they played with that, but they didn't go the full like sexual assault route. But it's still fucked up how they did it in Evil Dead Rise in terms of just right. like how she's hanging because it looks kind of like you know Shibari, Shibari like rope practices like Japanese rope time where people hang like it's usually yeah. it's kind of it's a kink thing and you get tied up in these like really intricate knots and it kind of looked like that in a really fucked up way like she was getting hung like that and i was like oh my god it's so uncomfortable and i think yeah. it's, it's 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 the legacy of that scene i think is just really interesting to track throughout um like the iterations of the evil dead and how people have either decided to stay away from it or confront it and i think it is really interesting how they how different films have kind of confronted it and integrated it in. I kind of, I like it. I feel like this is also a movie that's just like, it's really hard to get really deep into where you're not just like, I don't know, it's just cool, you know, or maybe I'm just kind of dumb. It's not like a deep movie. That's the only part that I ever really get, think about. Cause I mean, as we've all talked about a million times, I'm a big rape revenge, like sexual assault on screen person. But the rest of it is just like a good old fashioned fucked up people in the woods. Like, one of the OG Cabin in the Woods. Is this not, if not the, like, one of the OG, like, Cabin in the Woods movies? It's gotta be. Yeah. I don't, I, no, because. Well, I mean, where's Friday the 13th set? I haven't seen those movies, but those are, like, camp cabins. So, up in those like... are camp, camp, yeah, but it's a like yeah. camp on a lake. Sure. And it's, like. Yeah. It's close. So, it's close, but yeah. Uh, yeah. This one's also a much better film yeah. than Friday the 13th, in my opinion. Oh, You're the original one. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen Friday the 13th. I, I, um, I, but yeah, sorry. That was me. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd also say Friday the 13th is like, yeah, since it is at a camp, I feel like the sense of like total isolation is better defined both in terms of the atmosphere and the the claustrophobia of it here i feel like friday the 13th is much more open 
in terms of where they're able to run to, if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. Evil Dead, and there's you can't like roads live. and cars and it's like, it's a little bit easier. It's not as secluded mm-hmm. as, um, I- if, it, if it's not the first Cabin of the Woods movie, it's the first big Cabin of the Woods movie. Because if we're not yeah. thinking of anything else, then yeah. Love this movie. Love the sequel. Army of Darkness took me a while to like, but I recently rewatched it. And I was just like, there's skeletons playing flute bones. Why do I not love this movie? So, um, And then the remake, like I just said, is maybe my favorite horror movie of the 2010s. I fucking love that movie so much just the most no- that was put out by a major studio and that just blows my no, mind uh, now. and what, i saw that in theaters what studio was that film district so, so we might cover yeah. that someday um yeah also really quickly um are any of you excited for alvarez's uh, alien movie coming out that should be interesting fuck yeah. yes fuck yes oh yeah i don't like uh, i feel uh, Al- <clears throat> Good, go ahead. alvarez to me has been missing a lot and I didn't like Don't Breathe 2, did not like the new Texas Chainsaw. I know he didn't direct that one technically, but I think he wrote it or I, like, did a bunch he's of He's behind it. He also did Girl the Spider Slip, which was not great. <laughs> oh my god, we I forgot about that. that movie. Yeah. We all remember that. Yeah. I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> yeah. I just and I know everyone was like today, I think everyone was like, Ridley Scott said it's really good and I was like, Well, I mean okay maybe it is i don't know i'm a hater <clears throat> i just think after don't breathe too i was like i don't like this guy very much at all so maybe he'll maybe he'll surprise me because i loved evil dead i just haven't been a big fan sure. of a lot of his stuff recently i so- haven't been either i didn't even love i'd say the evil dead remake is well to be fair i haven't even seen don't breathe too but i didn't even like don't breathe that much and i think don't breathe I liked it for it's about cool. an hour, and then I oh, felt the fr- like the last half hour completely was different. Completely the first hour is, lost is me. badass. Because yeah. I, I loved the moral ambiguity of the first hour, and then the second... I sometimes think Fetty Alvarez might not like women very much. That's the other thing, is like it just got really gross, but not in a way that I thought was provocative. I just felt like it was exploitative and not not in any good way like it 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 just completely yeah it it made me feel really icky and again like like well, you don't Mary see Beth. don't breathe too because he's <laughs> like what if the rapist was was vindicated and I was yeah. like, oh brother well, yeah. I, don't, I pay i paid i paid my own u.s dollars to see that movie in movie theaters so i could write about it for someone oh wow what the fuck <laughs> yeah because i guess so angry I, I guess I'm just hyped because, like, even though I'm just like, yeah, Don't Breathe's fine. I haven't seen Don't Breathe 2. He made Girl with the whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, all that. But it's just like he has so much goodwill just with the Evil Dead that I'm just like, maybe he's going to take that goodwill that he had, like, 10 years ago to go to Alien. If not, oh, well. Maybe he's just a one-hit wonder. But I I just just love Evil Dead so much that I just hope so. They did TCM so dirty, I thought. I mean, I don't know if you guys feel the same way. But I, I I like it a lot actually. Okay, look, I know and it's, you are not alone, it, and I know that I am a particularly like don't do not like this movie camp, and that is okay. And that's okay. Well, with that one, I went in and I was just like, this is gonna suck because the last nineteen have sucked, and I was like, that movie hates children. This movie kicks ass. <laughs> and then it like it tried to bring back the Sally character, and I was like, oh brother. And then they just kill her off two minutes in, and I was like, oh hell yeah, dude. This oh, movie see, doesn't give a shit. Red. I was like, why did you even do it? Um, any- <laughs> like, just don't do it. Just be different. But that, you know, that's okay. The bus massacre was cool. I will, I'll give it that. That was cool. Yeah, they kicked ass. Um, but yeah, and then Evil Dead Rise, fucking loved that. That was awesome. So, this is. It's like when people are just like, "What's the best series?" I never think about Evil Dead, but damn near every single one is like just phenomenal and i can't say that about any other series there's ones that, are, that have a lot of good ones like nightmare on elm street which we're going to cover i think that has the most good movies of the entire series so what about if we're child's talking about like play? child's play i recently went through those last year and there was like only one that i didn't like i was very surprised on that series right? it's really good it's very, I'm, i also recently watched all of them and was like hold on this they're like actually good? good and then i was like uh let me put on this remake i'm sure this sucks and i was like it's kind of cool too. <laughs> I didn't even Maybe watch the give... remake. I just watched oh, could... the Do- I watched Check the Don Man- I watched the Don Mancini ones. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, remake's kind of cool. 
that's also a top tier fuck them kids movie boy howdy um i mean hey i love a fuck them kids movie so <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I don't don't really have anything deep or awesome to say other than Evil Dead rules and all the other ones rule too. So, Charlie, what do you got? Uh, yeah, uh, my first exposure to this, oddly enough, I'm wondering if anyone else uh, remember. Well, I, I assume some of you remember it, but Donnie Darko, where they go to see Evil Dead, and oh. then Frank shows up oh, yeah. in the theater. That was my first exposure. Like I knew what it was, obviously, but I think I was like 14 or 15 when I first saw Donnie Darko and then watched Donnie Darko religiously. Yeah. Uh, over and over again. Ah, um, yes. One and of you. I, one of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and I forgot every time I watched this movie, and I've seen it a few times, but I hadn't seen this since, like, I want to say co- college or maybe even high school, but I did watch it a ton as a teenager. I forgot that even in Donnie Darko, there's the sound of the the chair, the the swinging wooden chair that's like knocking against the house. They even use that diegetically in Donnie Darko to break up the tension, which I thought was awesome. Oh, and, yeah. I need to watch Donnie Darko again. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, and um, but yeah, I I love this movie. Uh, like all of you were saying, I mean, I I like Sam Raimi a lot. Um, I've seen most of his movies. I haven't seen Oz the Great and Powerful or Doctor Strange 2 or whatever. And you know what? I don't, I'm fine with that. Maybe he'll catch up with them, up with them someday. I don't know. Like, <laughs> they're, all, they're all gibberish to me, all the Marvel yeah. movies. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be a grouch. I literally just don't understand what's going on half the time. And that's because I don't watch, I don't know what's going on ever. Oh, oh like, me, okay. me neither. I, there was a period of time where I saw, I, I, I stopped after I think Infinity War. No, I didn't see Endgame because I just realized, you know what? These just aren't for me and that's okay. But even Infinity War, I was like, I know I've seen these, like most of these at this point. And I thought that character died and then that character's alive again and then they died again. And I, uh, like, yeah. Um, but, um. I, you know, I would rank this up there with probably my favorite Sam Raimi movies. I'd say Gun to My Head, Evil Dead 2 is my favorite, but I do love this Mm. one almost as much. And I grew up, uh, as I mentioned before, the Spider-Man trilogy was my gateway because I was pretty young. And um, I still think the first two films are really, really solid. In fact, I rewatched those in lockdown with my roommate and we were just like, God, like, remember when these movies, like, had a director who gave them style and, like, they were choreographed? I mean, speaking of superhero movies, that being said, that was before Doctor Strange 2 came out. I don't, I have not seen that one. I would hope there's some Raimiisms in there. I've heard mixed things. Is, did anyone see that one? <laughs> I did not see it, but I heard Which it's like. Then? Oh, uh, Doctor the, Strange 2. His too. Doctor Strange. I mean, yeah, like, I guess. Uh, oh, but, like, I, but, did I watch it? I did watch it. Yes. Yeah. I did watch it. Sorry. Oh my god. I was like, I, they, the, again, Doctor Strange to me is just like absolutely like incomprehensible. Like I couldn't. I watched the first one and was like, what? Is that is that Benjamin Bratt? What's he doing in here? That was the most confusing <laughs> and, like, thing. <laughs> Tilda Swinton's in it. Yes. As as an Asian man. Yeah, like, there was some controversy whole, around that. I think. Um, but it, it's it's fine. It's fun. But I, again, it's like it's hard. It's not you can't. It doesn't feel like Sam Raimi because it's in the machine. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it doesn't have the the Raimi feel as much because he's. I mean, what I don't even probably. I feel like the directors of these Marvel movies like don't do shit. You know what I mean? Like it feels like they're probably just plopped in the chair and like you can make a couple decisions, but like everything's pretty much planned out. Like where you have to go in terms mm-hmm. of all the crazy story beats. I think even Nia DaCosta, who did uh, the Candyman that came out remake that came out like a couple of years ago, recently did an interview where she was just like, "I mean, whatever. I got a paycheck now. I can do whatever I want to do." <laughs> like, and I think some people were Which like, "I hope so." Yeah, I, hope so. I kind of love how transparent she is. Where she was like, "I don't know. It's what Kevin she... Feige's movie. Whatever. What who cares?" Did... What did she direct? <laughs> uh, the Marvels. The Marvels. I think is what's coming out. That yeah, she did. it's coming out. Oh, it's not out yet, though. Okay. Yeah. I was like, no, but she did give an Zhao interview. Did the Eternals. <laughs> Which we all I did remember not that. See. I did we not see. That. I did see I mean, the exactly. Super- if you get the if you get the Marvel check, then you can make whatever fucking indie movie you want after that. Yeah, one hopes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yet we haven't gotten another Sam Raimi film since Doctor Strange too. So uh, it, that was like last year. So you know, like give us some time. <laughs> but you know. make it happen. Someone He's needs to make it happen. He's putting his name behind movies like that weird movie with Bill Skarsgård. That's like a video game. That was at TIFF, oh. but apparently wasn't oh, very wow. good. 
And, oh no! Right, and he also put his name behind a uh, crawl, which that was actually pretty solid. But yeah. oh hell yeah! Um, yeah, I think a lot of the, I think he's just doing a lot of producing now. Sure. And you know what? Good for yeah. him. And by producing, yeah. I mean I think people give him scripts, and he's like, "Cool, I'll put my name on that," and then he yeah. just gets to like vibe. And honestly, great, good for him. Yeah. <laughs> um, one quick question. What a life. One quick question, actually, because I, I I think, Kevin, you mentioned it at the start of the episode. I never watched, I mean, like I said, I'm new to this, uh, this series, but did any of you watch the, it was stars that did Ash versus the Evil Dead. Did any of you watch that? I, I've heard, actually, mm-hmm. that was kind of solid. Um, I was, haven't. Okay. I was my curious. husband, my husband watched some of it, and he said it was good, but I never watched any of it. Um, but Lucy Lawless is in that, too. Remember, wow. Speaking of Lucy Lawless, but my daughter, <laughs> she's in it. Um, wow. For a couple seasons, I think. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I watched like the first two episodes. I was like, I get it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, that movie you were talking about, Mary Beth, is called Boy Kills World. Which, sure. yes. Oh, I see what they did there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I so I watched. I I think so. I started with the first two or first three Spider Man movies, and then this was the one that I watched after that, and it was really cool. I remember as a teenager to point out like after having seen this, like, all the Evil Dead-isms that are in the other Spider-Man movies, like, especially think of Spider-Man 2, where Doc Ock wakes up for the first time and it's tentacle vision or whatever, and it's just watching that That, that now. That part is so good. It's amazing. Spider-Man 2 is so good. It's so good. I don't even hate... My I'm husband curious. and I sing... We, we pretend to be Alfred Molina singing um, If I Was a Rich Man. In the, in the, have you seen that deleted scene of him in the Doc Ock outfit yes. singing it? Yeah. Yes. My husband and I quote him singing that all the time. And it, I just think it's so funny. And I'm loved, I just I love Alfred Molina, so him being Doc yes. Ock was just so good. So it's... my brother hyper fixated on that movie. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm cool with that. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy how you go back and you watch those movies even today. And now they're 20 years old, which good Lord makes me feel old. Um, and they still hold up. They're still such like they are obviously big budget studio movies, but the Raimi-isms, Raimi's like whole personality just flows within every single frame of that thing. The first two, especially even the third one, which I know I remember when that came out and people were like, the hell is this? And it's not very good. I will take it over a million of these other Marvel entries because it at least has a personality and you could at least see Sam Raimi fighting to hold on to any semblance of his own spirit that helped make the first two. But then to go back and watch this and see something that was just, I, I love, you know, I, it was a big gateway for, like, not just um, the horror genre, but for, like, low-budget horror for me. Like, I mean, we were talking about it already with, you know, the goop and, you know, the mashed potato-type special effects and stuff like that. And just, you know, I remember just certain images, like, at one point where, I mean, one of the biggest... Uh, one of the effects that still gets me is the blunt unsharpened pencil going into the Achilles oh, yeah. heel. And then later just, you know, it infecting her with like watercolor effects, like stuff like that. I just remember being a teenager and being like, I've never seen anything like this before. And we still haven't, we will never get anything like this again today, even though the franchise is going with the TV series, as we mentioned in the other movies. I also, I I'm sorry. I liked evil dead, the remake. Okay. But I thought it was, you know, I thought the gore was pretty effective and impressive, but then it just kind of became monotonous through this one tone. And then Evil Dead Rise, I'm sorry, I just felt like it was kind of a movie with Evil Dead tacked onto it, where it felt like kind of two movies crazy glued into one with all the Evil Dead references and stuff like that. And yeah, it was kind of the same thing for me where I just felt like the dour tone, the tone came off as very dour to me and very self-serious. And yeah, as you mentioned, Bryden, like the themes on motherhood and all this stuff, I was just kind of like, this isn't really why I go to an Evil Dead movie. You know, I kind of go for the schlockiness and the goofiness and the charm and the gore. It definitely, you know, supplied on gore, but that just, it just didn't work for me. It just felt very one note. I don't think they're like the worst things ever, or like an affront to horror or anything like that. But I just left, I remember leaving both feeling a little disappointed, but rewatching this film for the first time since I've seen either of those made me fall back in love with just these types of, yeah, fun, uh, you know, horror movies that were just made by, you know, 
geeks who love making this kind of stuff. Like the passion and the in, uh, behind it is just abundant in every fucking scene. And this time around, I did think it was interesting because Mary Beth, I know you t- you touched upon the tree rape, which has always been you know troubling for me as well. Um, there was one thing I noticed this time around, which I I don't know if this is even going for anything intentionally, but all of the possessed. The demons in this one I didn't pick up on this until recently and maybe I'm just a dum-dum but it's mainly the two men fighting off against the women in this one which I thought was kind of interesting I know that Scott does get possessed very late into the game of course but it, I checked and there were only 10 minutes left and there were some interesting things that I didn't remember like when they find the book of the dead and they find the blade with the skeleton on it and Scott says like yeah it kind of looks like your ex-girlfriend huh and I was kind of like oh like I I don't know if that you know and I I it's like just the it, most beautiful example of 1980s masculinity you know what I mean like it's like one of it's like it's one of those things when you go back and watch these movies and you're like I just have to remember (laughs) that sometimes things in society were kind of shitty. And it's hard when your faves have a movie where it's basically men having an excuse to hit women. And I don't, and I, and that is not me saying that Sam Raimi hates women and that Sam Raimi wants to hit women. Anyone listening to this who is, who is, doesn't have reading comprehension slash listening comprehension, but it is mostly a really weirdly indicative of what horror was, though. You know what I mean? Like, it's the women are the weak ones that get possessed and the men must fight them. And it's just and like making comments about women and their bodies. And it's just very immature because, again, it's film bro's first movie in the woods. You know what I mean? Like, it's got a little a teeny bit of that immaturity in it. That I don't think is like super obvious, but like you're saying, I think it's sprinkled in there with those kinds of comments and like that those kinds of moments. Do I was wondering if it's almost like I I do I agree with you. It's a little it's certainly a little immature, but I'm wondering if it's almost like almost accidentally interesting to view as an artifact these days. You know, like I I was curious because, um, you know, I was thinking about how. I forgot that the the tree rape scene was the first big scare that happens. And then nobody, first of all, nobody believes her. Nobody really, you know, Ash is the only person who's kind of like, man, you didn't have to keep playing that. And he was like, what? You were playing it too. And then she runs out in the woods and she's telling everyone what's going on. No one believes her. She's the first one to get possessed. And then everyone's just kind of even like they're just kind of nonchalant i mean it's even kind of funny at one point ash is just like don't worry we'll all go home together well i guess you kind of cut that person up but then it'll it'll be okay like that type of thing i'm like i was like i and you know it doesn't even have to be deep but part of the reasons i love this movie are also for just superficial art uh, aesthetic reasons that are just make it a you know a sick blast to watch but i was just kind of like noticing little things that as a teenager I didn't pick up on this time around which I thought maybe it is juvenile maybe it's a little immature maybe it's not it's naive too or not even intentional but I did think that stuff was interesting I was wondering if anyone else picked up on it during this viewing yeah um well I do think it's interesting I feel like people probably talk about this when talk about the movie but it's interesting how Ash doesn't immediately seem like he's going to be the main character of the movie because he is like you know he's in like the he's got the window seat like you know crammed in like in the back in the back of the car and everything and like when when uh I think it's when I, I don't remember who it is that gets possessed but um when uh Scott is like you know trying to take charge or anything he's like you know occupying he's like a little bit more closer to the foreground and thing whereas ash is kind of like huddled up against like the back of the back in the background and everything because he doesn't know what to do he just seems kind of frozen and everything and then like scott is the one who like i guess finds it a little easier to tap into that side of him where he is willing to do these awful uh, these yeah uh, 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 very barbaric things to like you know uh fight back and everything and then there is the moment i think campbell plays this very well and everything where when he is um he's confronting his possessed girlfriend and he's like slap and he like is like slapping her a bunch and everything and there is like a moment where she's like you know centered in the shot and everything and he like gets this moment of like you know reflection where he like is like he kind of like seems aware of what he's done and he's seems perturbed by like what he's been pushed to and everything and like that's kind of i guess like and you know i think you're right in that there is like sort of an i I think there would be something there if the movie fleshed his characters out a little bit more and i'm not saying i need like an entire movie where like 
we need like uh, all this backstory about like the lore of like the book of the dead and about like all the characters relationships like that i like how lean this movie is and again how single-minded it is it's just like you know, sort of a scare machine because it's a very well-oiled scare machine but it's again it, it, it maybe i i think there is maybe some some merit to the points that are being brought up where like maybe those like sort of shocking bits of violence uh are maybe ring a little bit hollow uh in terms of like what they signify because like maybe there isn't as much going on there and you know it, it, obviously you can like the movie still i like the movie too but it's like you're, you're it's, i think it's important to critique these things as, as we as we all are in this conversation. Yeah, yeah well yeah. I, I i i wasn't even like yeah it wasn't even like they were i i wasn't like as as upset by them as to, no. I was just kind of like I wasn't really as a teenager picking up on just sure. I, I completely forgot that Cheryl was Ash's sister and I think it's interesting yeah. that there are two couples and then her and she's the first one to get picked off and then it's the two bros dealing with their girlfriends who are being possessed and then it ultimately I, I, I just found all that kind of interesting and yeah I also like, like you Brian and I love how lean and mean it is I don't I think it's got just the perfect amount of exposition for we found this book of the dead in the basement. Let's here see what this is going to is, is all about. And I do kind of like that. They are just like, whatever cabin in the woods. Honestly, that sounds kind of fun, especially like, you know, like I remember like one time I had a bubble in my lockdown. Uh, I had a lockdown bubble where we all just ran away for like a weekend and it was like perfect. So it's even like the horror of it. I'm like, I don't know. There seems like, I mean, Mary Beth, you've talked about making you know films and cabins in the woods it sounds just kind of like even that i'm like i mean sure why not there's an appeal there like <laughs> i mean it wasn't bad it was yeah it was hard but it wasn't bad yeah i was in the middle of kentucky it was in the middle of nowhere it was great <laughs> yeah. i thought you were gonna say charlie in your covid bubble you had a book of the dead and i was very curious on how that went but i guess not <laughs> no i was curious i don't think i have it anymore but i used to have i think it was evil dead 2 it was like a special edition dvd that was a book yeah. of the dead and oh, it was yeah. rubbery yeah. it was rubbery yeah. it was so cool <laughs> it, it, yeah you poke the eye and it screamed yeah oh. yeah i think it yeah got, you like, look them torn up overall over time i think I, oh, my yeah. cat tore you, it up and like got all the stuffing out of it like which, which, you look that up on ebay now and like every single copy is like decaying over time yeah, yeah. <laughs> i didn't think about that yeah uh so final thoughts on evil dead evil dead franchise what do we got what do we got classic 10 out of 10 shape cinema shape indie horror cinema yeah i love it <laughs> Um, one of my favorite bits in the movie too is um, I I like how mean the demons are in the movie and everything how they're constantly mimic and this is an interesting thing I've noticed in like several horror movies I watched this week there's like something very unnerving to me about like a person like committing like horrible acts of violence and like evil acts and laughing in the face of it there's something like just so unnerving about that and like that's like in this you're gonna love when evil learns oh wow (laughs) all right then yeah but like the the way like they're all like imitating like you know ash's voice and everything like you know when like he's and like or when he's like crying and like you know actually like in expressing despair and like saying oh save her and everything and then but my favorite bit is when um there's the the trick where like uh it seems like uh, Linda has, like, you know, regained her humanity and everything. And then, like, you hear uh, Cheryl call, like, say, like, Ash, you know, like, I- I'm I'm, I'm free, too, and everything. But, like, I love that that particular demon is doing a really bad job of sounding human or saying, like, I'm ready to be let I'm out all now. Right. Or then they sound, like, really <laughs> yeah. annoyed. And it's, like, they're barely, like, they're just, like, I like that the demon's just a bad actor who can't conceal their evil uh, for long enough to keep up the charade. I just, I, I think that's, like, an I, underrated I, gag. Yeah. I also found it really funny. I forgot this time around that he's outside with Cheryl for so long that by the time he goes back in, she's just escaped and you don't even see how because it's like, well, yeah, enough time has passed. Of course she's oh, going to get I think you do get like the, when he's like burying um, his ex or his girlfriend, uh, like you do get like the sort of brief cuts to like, you know, the chains rattling uh, when like the, the hinges oh, yeah. are being burst off. But yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do kind of like though that it's just kind of like, well, yeah, he was outside for like so long <laughs> also I'm, I'm just curious what did everyone think of that necklace that he gave her because i was like oh the magnifying glass that's like gonna come into play and it it, it uses it as he uses it as a hook later on but i was kind of like well, that's a weird piece of jewelry and then i was just kind of like oh i guess the magnifying glass didn't pay uh, uh, who cares it felt <laughs> like, like something that like they had they didn't know what to use like use this you know what I, it felt very <laughs> yeah. like that very because again so, i've been there where you're like 
you fucking whatever. Just do this. It's fine. No one will worry Sam, about it. Sam Raimi was just like, anyone got a necklace on set? <laughs> anyone got anything you can use? I think I, did I, I feel like at one point I asked something like that. Does anyone have this that I can use for like five minutes? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, well, to wrap it up, I'm going to share this in the chat in that there was a comic book miniseries of Army of the Darkness, and it was uh, oh. Ash Saves Obama. What? There was four comic books of this. Ash Saves Obama. Huh. <laughs> Wild oh. time. Who, who wrote that one? Who, wow. Was it Raimi who wrote it? Or like one of the Raimis? I guarantee it was not. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's no way. They just probably made money off of it. Good for them. Uh, Elliot Serino. That's that's who did it. Okay. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> just wild times. Uh, there insane. are so many Army of Darkness comics. It's insane. There's crossovers with Darkman. There's crossovers with Marvel Reanimator. Tons of stuff. Shocking. Darkman rules. <laughs> Darkman's a fun time. Yeah. I need to watch uh, Darkman. I haven't seen Darkman. Oh, Man. it's That's so fun. The one I haven't seen since high school. Yeah. I know. I need to watch it. I just have. Yeah, there's a lot of movies. Almost too many, even. <laughs> <laughs> there are too many movies. We need to cut it out. Just like give us a year where it's just nothing comes out, so we can catch up just a little bit, just a little bit. Or rewatch movies bit. like this again, because <laughs> I was just like, how did it? How have I not seen this in like ten years? And yeah, just so happy. To That's revisit. why we have podcasts to make us Thanks. watch movies that we haven't. Either make us watch things that we haven't seen, because that's my podcast, is mm-hmm. getting me to watch things that I have woefully not seen. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Almost Major. Please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Please follow the pod on Twitter at Almost Major to keep up to date with what movies we will be covering in the future. Myself, I can be found on Twitter and Letterbox at Kev Bonesy. Bryden can be found on Twitter at Bryden Doyle and on Letterbox at J Doyle. Charlie can be found on Twitter and Letterbox at CTNash91. Once again, thank you for listening.